Uh, one seven equal to R. To R is human. I'm pretty sure you have heard this a couple of times. Or if you're in aviation or a similar safety critical environment, more than a million times. So what it simply means is, as humans, we tend to make a lot of mistakes. It's in our human nature to make mistakes. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to discuss what human factor is as a term and different models we can utilize to mitigate human errors and also how can we continue to raising awareness about human factors in our workplace or in our business. So without further ado, let's get to the video. So what is human factors? Human factors is how me as a person or you as a person interact with the aircraft system or other people and how the environment ar around us affects our performance or ability to give an output. This is what human factors is. Basically, in layman's term, how everything and anything around us impact our performance, which can lead to errors which can lead to fatal consequences. So having understood what human factors, let's look at some of the models we use in the aviation business that can use to mitigate some of the errors that we humans tend to make. Quick reminder before moving on to models, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do take this opportunity to subscribe to my channel because this will encourage or motivate me to bring out more videos, more definitions, simplified. And if you have any ideas or comments or concerns, please put them down in the comment section because I need to learn from you just like you are learning from me. So without wasting any more time, let's move on to the models. So the first model is the pair model. I think it's safe to say the pair model is one of the easiest and one of the basic models to understand human factors because it addresses different elements of human factors and how it can impact the human performance. The uh, pair model is divided into four main categories, namely P for people, E for environment, A for action and R for resources. And it's worth mentioning that I was lucky enough to sit in a lecture of Dr. Bill Johnson the man behind this model. So as he explained, these categories are crucial in assessing and mitigating errors in aircraft maintenance. So let's look at what pair model is all about. P for people. It's about the physical ability, the psychological ability, and also what's happening in your family or around you can affect the work you're performing. When it comes to environment, environment can also affect the human performance. Is the lighting good? Are we working in a proper environment? Are we working in a proper weather? And actions can be requirements, certification requirements, ability requirements. We can also say, do we have enough people to work? So these are, these falls under action and our resources, do we have proper manuals and do we have proper tools to work all these things can be put under resources so the second model is the shell model now the easiest way to describe what shell model is in a given culture i.e environment there are three components that interact with each other in order to influence the human output now I said three, but there are four. I'll explain why I said three. The first one is S in the shell, which is software. Those are the rules, written requirements, guidelines, basically standard operating procedures. So the second one is hash, which is for hardware. So it can be anything from tools, equipment, and any, any resources that helps you to do the job properly. Third one is environment. 
Environment is, again, just like in the pair model, environment is, do you have suitable lighting? Do you have a suitable temperature to work? If it is a winter day, it's bone chilling. Is the heaters working? These, these sort of things are the E of the uh, shell. Now the next two is live wear, which is people. It's how people interact with other people. So as you can see on the screen, you got L in the middle, and you got S, you got H, you got E, and you got another L right below it. Basically, this forms a cross. So this is how you interact in a maintenance environment. So you are there in the middle. Okay, now you need to uh, perform a task. How would you go about it? Okay, you need to have written documents, instructions, i.e. aircraft maintenance manuals, illustrated part catalog, component maintenance manual. Now you have them. What else do you need to perform this task safely? Do you have proper tooling? Okay, now we are touching the H, which is hardware. Do you have proper tooling? Do you have proper equipment to perform this task? The next one is environment. Do we have a safe place to perform this task? Do we have proper lighting? Are the heating systems are in place? And next, you need to work in a team being in aviation. You need to interact with other people. So how well do you interact with them? Okay, and what are your abilities? What are their abilities? And you need to find this perfect balance. So this is basically what shell model is, how you would perform a task while interacting with these uh, other components. So the third model is Jane's Reasons Swiss Cheese Model. This is a pretty basic module. I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody used this model in our day-to-day -day conversations in the business. But do we really know what this actually means? Forget the cheeses. Let's think of it as barriers. And if you drill holes in those barriers, there is a certain amount of chance something can go through these holes if they align okay let's just say we broke through one barrier okay there's another barrier to stop us by so for some reason we crossed that barrier as well there are let's just say for the sake of this example there are three barriers and we run through the third barrier as well now at the end of that barrier it's that big accident waiting to happen so let's take a quick scenario to understand the swiss cheese model let's just say you are a manager in your team and you're responsible for managing their uh, your your team's training and let's just say for some reason you missed out one particular person's training and that person is doing a simple task on an aircraft as simple as putting a wire locking on a bolt so He's done that, he's gone for his coffee, and now the aircraft flies off. Aircrafts are prone to many aerodynamic vibrations. Let's just say this bolt now slips through its slot and the aircraft faces an accident. Now, what are the main barriers we could have put in place to prevent that from happening? The first one is, did the manager have a good training management system? Or was he writing down all the training requirements of his teammates on a piece of paper? If he had a proper training management system that gives him warnings such as, okay, a training is due, you need to train this person. We could have avoided this person doing this task wrong in the first place. So that's our first barrier, a good training management system. The second one is not having proper training to do that task. He actually did the task. Now, here the barrier should be, can we implement a duplicate inspection on the task that he has carried out? If the duplicate inspection was done, they, the person who, who's doing the independent check would quickly realize that the uh, while looking was done incorrectly so he could have recovered it but in this case it haven't it wasn't completed so it slits through the 
that second barrier. So the third barrier could have been, have we applied chalk sealant onto the board? Surely, if this person was not trained, he would not know to add chalk sealant. But in case if we have added chalk sealant, someone in the vicinity might have spotted it. Or a pilot was doing a walk around inspection. If, if it's in its reach, he would have spotted it. Going a bit more further, have we implemented a fail-safe mechanism? If one ball loses, if the aircraft goes down, then this should have been a primary structure. So incorporating many balls around it would hold the structure in place due to aerodynamic, aerodynamic forces or even harsh weather. So this is a simple example how we can understand the Swiss cheese model and different barriers and these holes are the transition points where you miss to do something. So this is the basic Swiss cheese model. So the last model is hash facts, which is human factor analysis and clarification system. Now, hash fact is one of these uh, advanced models compared to the previous three. So it works on different levels and how latent failure in one of those levels can lead to failure or an accident and if we identify and rectify it in any of those levels we could have prevented that accident or incident happening so what are the four levels so the first or the topmost level is the organizational influence how much influence does the organization have on you to complete a task Second level is unsafe supervision. How, what, what was the supervision like? Were you supervised uh, when you were doing the job? And the third level is preconditions for unsafe act, such as stuff that can be lack of tooling, lack of people, or it can also be fatigue and stuff like that. And the last level is the unsafe act, which is the accident so we could have prevented an accident from happening if we address the latent failure on any of those uh, four levels so this is the summary of H facts as I said the last part of this video is strategies to uh, promote awareness of human factors so you can do human factor training in your business so in my in my company we do human factor training and it will be valid for two years this way you are refreshing continuously refreshing the minds of the people who are working and open communication channels uh, people need to have a culture that they are free to raise any concern related to safety um, or anything that that can that could have an adverse effect at the end last but not least small improvements can give us big wins as in the kaisan models everybody needs to be aware of your surrounding and if you see any small detail that requires improvement that can be improved just raise it so it could be improved and we are setting up ourselves for a bigger win so this is what I wanted to bring to you guys today. The definition of human factors under 10 minutes. Hope you learned something. If you really learned something new and if you think anybody else can benefit from it, share it with them. So I could do more videos like this in the coming future. So, so I'll bring another video on the Defined Aviation next week. Until then, keep fixing.